Hey guys, and welcome to episode 26 of the Cardinals Nation 24-7 podcast. I'm your host, Chris Lawless, and on this episode, we have a packed house full of our Cardinals Nation 24-7 group admin and moderators. With me, as always, is the living legend, Larry Cox. How are you doing tonight, Larry? Hi, Chris. Going on, man? Doing great, doing great. Uh, Returning back is our fellow co-host. We're glad to have him back. I'm sure the audience that tunes in they miss him dearly just like we do mr jared redwine how you doing tonight i'm good guys thanks it's uh, i'm glad to be back it's been a little bit and uh yeah i'm glad to be here I, w- I wanted to wait till we had some stuff to celebrate so i'll let you guys go through the shitty stretch now i'm back playoffs like i said from the beginning sounds like a plan sounds good uh returning back this week from last week is mr zach jen how you doing zach good still riding the high of last night and jared i will say if if we start to do bad, you have to leave again. It's the rules. Hey, that's no problem. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> actually, actually, I know you're going to go into the other guys, but I don't want to forget. I actually was watching a bunch of videos while I'm unpacking because I moved to my new place, and uh, one of them had Zach on. And all three of you fuckers are like, yeah, we're, we're, it was during the bad stretch. I'm like, we're going to make the playoffs or whatever. And I'm like, you guys are idiots. We're not going to make the playoffs. <laughs> I just watched it right before we started, so great. That's too funny. And also joining us, uh, we've got the professor, Brad Kell. How you doing tonight, Brad? Good. Thanks for having me back. Glad, Glad, to, have you back on. Glad to have you back. And first time on the show is Mr. Boyd Harder. We're glad to finally have you on, Boyd. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, you know, it's a good time to be on, right? For sure. At the end of a stretch like that. For sure. I'll just go around the horn. I mean, it's it's crazy to think this Cardinals team has been as hot as what they have been. Uh, 17 straight. It's not looking like they're going to get number 18 tonight, but they've been playing out of their mind. I know we touched on it a little bit last week, but I'll go around the horn and uh, ask you guys just what you're seeing from this Cardinals team that whether it's the pitching, the hitting, the, the team management of things. I mean, what is it that you're seeing from this team that they're clicking on all cylinders and riding this hot streak. We'll start with you, Larry. Oh, the biggest thing is that, I mean, all the little things that were killing us early on, the walks, the hits, batters, just the bad sloppy play, it's all just gone. It just went away. And now they're playing as a team. It's solid baseball all the way across. I mean, nobody can really complain about much, anything, really. No, there's, I mean, there are people in the group that will complain about something, especially like if we don't pull this one out tonight, it'll be like, what the hell? We suck again. But no, it's, it's, it's been crazy. Jared, I I know it's nothing more exciting than the Cardinals clinching a spot, you know, albeit it's the wild card, but Hey, it's better than nothing. Uh, You know, a lot of people did have this team rode off, but you know, they've done something that historically is just, we haven't ever seen it in our lifetime. Uh, yeah, you know, what are your thoughts on the the clinching? That's just it's an awesome feeling. It's it's totally awesome. We had a two percent chance. Everybody's been talking about it the last two days. A two percent chance coming into uh, the month of September. And now we've guaranteed ourselves a spot, and you know we're we have this last week to where we can kind of get guys rest. You know, Yachty has a his shoulders bother him a little bit. We can rest some guys, kind of finalize things. We're not we're not pitching. We're not going to have to run our best starter and our best pitching staff out there on the last day of the season and then try to overtax them and try to bring them in for that wild card game. We can actually kind of sit back and plan and, and work on things, but it's, it's, you know, it's crazy how the season goes. And I bet uh, nobody's happier than Jeff Albert and, uh, you know, everybody was wanting to fire him and we couldn't hit. And now look at the offense, that whole streak, we were just crushing it. No matter when we were down, you felt like we weren't out of it. So I mean, it just makes sense to go out and clinch it. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'll shoot over to you, Zach. Uh, you know, we talked last week, and it just the team clicking on all cylinders. I mean, what what have you seen that's really stood out as why this team's put together this run? I mean, there's so, so many things you could point out, but something has to jump out at you of what is it that's got this team going. Yeah, I think it started out with the pitching, really. You know, we had guys who were – starting to eat innings and give our bullpen a rest. And I think at the beginning of the year, we thought, you know, this this pitching rotation before the injuries was good, but then also the bullpen, hopefully they'll be able to, you know, be something special. And we had guys go down all over, and then you bring in guys at the deadline who, yeah, it took them a while to kind of get their feet planted, but then when they started eating innings, it gave that bullpen a rest. And now, you know, you kind of look forward, well, okay, we have guys returning from injury who were starters, and they're 
they're going to shore up our bullpen even more. Um, I think that just gave the rest of the team kind of the confidence, especially in those late inning situations. Like, okay, you know what? We're still in this. We can come back, and confidence is contagious. For sure. And what say you, Brad? I mean, this it's been timely hitting. You know, I mean, it's been pitching, stepping their game up. It seems like we're finding different ways to win each night. Sometimes it's not the prettiest way. I mean, I've seen some crazy things happen, you know, with the double play that they had the other night. It just, just crazy stuff's happening. I think when, when you play bad, sometimes bad things happen. When you play good, like every little good thing happens. So what say you on what's standing out for you? Yeah, I mean, kind of jumping off of what, what everyone else is saying, pitching, I mean, we, we've been pitching extremely well, but also health. Um, when, when we were kind of heading down uh, earlier this summer, we, we were without a lot of our pitchers, and now everyone's starting to slowly come back, get healthy, and I, I think that's kind of been one of, uh, one of the big sticking points there that the, the big reason I mean, we're, we clinched the playoffs, we're, we're healthy. Um, I mean, I, I was getting, as I've, I've said with you guys before, I've been kind of worried that kind of been peaking a little too soon. So now that we've uh, clinched and we can start resting some guys, um, hopefully we can um, be, be straight and settled for uh, that wild card game. Yeah, it's uh, just unbelievable. And Boyd, what, what have you uh, seen from this team? I know you tune in and watch, you know, every game and get to see a lot of what's happening. So, like, what, what are your takeaways on what's got this team clicking? Yeah, it's right. It's uh, winning fixes all problems, right? So, you know, these guys start winning and, and one win leads to another and these guys get their confidence. And, you know, you go up that lineup, you go around the field you just can't find a problem. I mean, this, this, when was the last time somebody in the group complained about one of the lineups? You know, that used to be a standard thing back in June and July. I mean, we heard about it every single day, but uh, I mean, it's just, it's just phenomenal what they're doing. And, you know, you look in the dugout during the game and those guys are having fun and that changes everything. Cause I have not seen a team go far in the playoffs when those guys in the dugout aren't looking like they're having a blast. So. Yeah, that's been a big part of it, too. And I know that winning kind of breeds that positive outlook. And this Cardinals team, it seemed like early on, could not string together a lengthy win streak. You know, they might win two or three here and there, but they just weren't able to put together a streak. Now, we none of us could see this coming. But I think you're right. You know, you're seeing some guys, especially Harrison Bader, bringing life to this team. Like, he's, he's like the Jose Martinez that we had where he's pumping up players in the dugout. Uh, you don't want to see the long faces. And even though Schilt does say in his post game that we don't give up and, you know, we take it a series at a time, sometimes that comes across as, you know, just mundane and monotone and you're not really taking much from it. But I'm sure behind the scenes they were all firing each other up. Hey, let's not give up. But that no quit mentality, I mean, I've not seen anything like it. And, you know, Larry, I'll just shoot over to you like, Boyd also touched on this, the lineups, you know, that sometimes we complain about, you know, the only complaint now, I think some of the fans were, did we lay down tonight with the lineup that we put out? You know, we're kind of in this area where you do got to rest some players, but you don't want to cool off the hot bats. So what say you on your strategy, if you're Mike Shield on how to handle this roster going into the last series with the Cubs and how you, uh, how you go forward? Well, knowing that, you know, they had a day off and uh, now they come into the series against the Brewers. Um, do you really want to set a Bader who struggled, you know, all season long pretty much or his career, really? Um, we know he's been streaky as hell. So why would you just keep that lineup set is beyond me. I would have played for 18 and 19 and 20 and so on. Um, because the reality is they're going to have the, you know, the off season to rest. So why take the chance and let a guy cool up? But also, again, how smart would it be if an Arenado or Goldschmidt twist an ankle in a game 18 that did mean nothing? So you're, you're, you're kind of living on a double-edged sword either way. And Schilt's going to be the GOAT. If he loses, it's going to be, oh, my God, he costs us because of this stupid lineup. I can, I can read it already. But, you know, why is Carp in there? You know, we're going to hear that for the next two days. But it's, again, you have to be preventative. You have to be thinking ahead. Because the most important thing now is the ring. You're going for that ring and the brass title. You're not, you're not, it's not about 18, 19 wins. Those history books come and go. So, 
Yeah, I mean, for sure, we're all going to remember this long stretch of baseball, you know, of, of wins. But at the end of the day, you're playing for a championship, so you got to be smart about it. Jim, what, how would you go about handling it? Do you kind of rest a guy here and there? Or like tonight, you're giving three or four guys a, a day off? Or I know it's a, a tough balance. Some of the fans are going to ride Shields' ass one way or the other on it. But, you know, I mean, it, it is a tough balance. You know, it's kind of hard to do what he's doing. Yeah, it's a mixed bag of, you know, keeping people healthy and fresh and then letting the guys that are hot stay hot and trying to expand on this winning streak that has, you know, rejuvenated the team and and the fans, as you can see from everybody that's been in attendance. Because, uh, you know, they, they definitely fell way short of uh, attendance, uh, not just because of COVID this year, but because people were not coming to the ballpark. I mean, I'm sure that was a contributing factor, but... I, if I was Mike Schild, I would go to the players and say, hey, you know, I'm still going to keep you in. You're hot. How do you feel? Be honest with me. You need a day, you know, or your your knees barking as your back, you know, and kind of let them go. Because you would think if you're going to arrest a guy, it would probably be Goldschmidt, not Arenado. Or maybe you you have more, a little more tact to it. And you give different guys different days at different times. You know, Carlson just had two days off, but that was fine. He was the only one out of the lineup. You know, Yachty was was kind of hurt. So I could see Yachty plus one, maybe, you know, maybe sitting Edmund down today with letting Rondon play would be fine. But I would have kept O'Neill and Arenado in the lineup unless there's something going on we don't know about. But I would try to keep riding high. Maybe maybe you run a lineup out like this the last day of the season, you know, something of that nature. Yeah, and I'll piggyback that question back over to you, Zach. I mean, it's, it is that tough balance. And I, I think really with the remainder of the Spurs series, knowing that you've clinched, you can afford to, you know, give multiple guys a day off. But I, I think the upcoming series with the Cubs, you've got to still take that serious because you want your team hot out of the gate into that one game. I don't think you rest guys the entire Cubs series. What say you on that, Zach? Yeah, no, I think, you know, if it's me, I probably give a guy, you know, kind of circle circulate guys um, here and there one game per series. I mean, I think you want to play them the last two games of that series um, against the Cubs, maybe give them um, so they're, you know, primed and ready to go because they're going to have another two day break, I think, between that and the NL um, wild card game. But I mean, I think Edmund makes sense. I mean, he's played what all but like seven, eight games last year. I mean, he's tripled the amount of games he's played last year and the year before. So that makes sense to me. Um, You know, he probably could use it. Um, and Goldschmidt and Arenado, I think they're going to probably be flip-flopped and taking days off because they're going to want to get Carpenter in there in this last home stand. Like I've said a couple of times, I don't think you justify putting him on the um, roster for the playoffs. And I think this is his kind of farewell tour. So they're going to find ways to get him in there. And, and you're not really, I don't think, hurting yourself if you rest a Goldschmidt or an Arenado because, you know, this isn't their first rodeo. Yeah, the thing with Rondon is, like, even in limited at-bats, he seems to, you know, be getting it done. I mean, the guy comes up, and you know, without getting many plate appearances, that's that's usually hard for a player to adjust to. And with Sosa kind of being hurt with getting hit on the hand, it maybe forces your hand to play Carpenter a little bit, you know, in these meaningless games. But, you know, Brad, the professor, I know you probably got an out opinion on this matter. So what, what say you on how, – how would you handle it going in the next series? Yeah, I, I'd kind of intermix the starters with some of our bench players. Um, but de- definitely definitely Sunday, um, get get the starters kind of back in there. Um, just so everyone's ready to go for Wednesday. Um, but I get, give guys off the, the day here or there. Um, I – because I mean, they do need rest. They, because I mean, Goldie, uh, Edmund, um, Arnado, they, they've all played more than 150 games this year. Um, so they, they're definitely due, due for some rest. And I, I mean, I know a couple weeks ago when Goldschmidt got, got that uh, day off and Carpenter started for him, that was his first day not starting since I want to say before the all-star break. So, I mean, they definitely deserve to have a day off here or there between now and this weekend. So. And Boyd, I know, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy, not just the lineup, but the way you handle the pitching staff also needs to be taken into consideration, you know, on resting guys or maybe stretching 
a guy out in a game or, you know, let him go two innings like an Andrew Miller or something, you know, where he's not going to be pitching in high leverage situations. So what what are your opinions on both the lineup, maybe the pitching staff too, on how you'd handle it? Yeah, so you, you got to think that they've got the uh, rotation clearly in place at this point. Everybody's been rested and they had that lineup for a while. They might've been planning on uh, – a play-in game on Monday. So maybe there's something there, giving somebody else an extra day of rest. We might see a change and, you know, giving somebody here on the rotation a, a day or so. Um, you know, I can't get too excited about the conversation about like tonight's game because I'm indifferent. You know, I, I you, know, it, you know, keep the starters in, keep the starters out. We, we got a week until our next meaningful game. And uh, I like what Jared said about, you know, just ask these guys, you know, some of them are veterans. They've been around the block. They know what they're talking about. And, and, one thing is fans, we have no clue what these guys are going through pain-wise, right? Arenado, he's had a tight back, I think, recently. We've got, you know, Yadi had a sore shoulder. That's, who knows what that means, right? That's kind of a big worry there. So, I mean, all these guys got something barking. And, uh, you know, we don't have a meaningful game until next uh, next week. I guess every game now is meaningful for Dion and uh, Carpenter. You know, they're they're showcasing right now. And I think uh, the team should give them that, give them and their agent that opportunity, you know, go out there and play. Yeah. You know, and what's wild too is you knew that Molina had to be hurting because, you know, for him to have be a late scratch in his uh, last night with Wainwright, whether it'd be adding on to their total, I knew there had to be something, you know, more to it than just uh, a little bit of an ache, you know, or he would have went out and at least took that start. Um, but with the Wainwright and Yachty thing, Wainwright did get win number 17 last night. I'll just kind of shoot around. How, how impressive and important has Wainwright been? He has really put this team on his back as far as pitching goes. And without him, I cannot imagine where this team would be. Larry, we, you know, we've talked about Wainwright before, but this guy is just pitching like he's 20 years younger. And he doesn't have electric stuff, but he definitely is getting it done. Well, I, uh, you know, I, first off, I'd like to say, you know, I was the one guy last year that said, you know, sometimes it's time to write him off and write off sunset, enjoy the, what he had last year and move on. And I'm glad I was wrong. I'm glad he stayed. Uh, it's pretty amazing. 17th year, 17th win game 17. How nice is that? Um, had a nice ring to it. Um, I think, you know, last year they had that rosin bag ear, the issue last year, they came up with that whole thing about him. And I think he just come, came out and said, Hey, I got something to prove before I'm done. And it's been an amazing ride for him this year. I mean, of all people. And if, you know, if he decides he's going to come back for sure and, and do the whole sunset with a uh, ride off with Yachty and everybody and uh, pull holes. And, um, <laughs> and if they decide to come back and they decide to do it, you know, hopefully he has something equivalent to this year because it would be sad to see him come out on a losing season next year. Jared, I know Larry gives us shit because we we always like to have that bit of a nostalgia. You know, we're fans of that. But, you know, with Wainwright, what, you know, there's only so much you can say about him, but just kind of your thoughts on how important he's been to this team. I was going to say, I'm glad he walked his comments back because just the other day, Larry said, I'd offer Lester a contract right now. And I'm like, you prick. Last year you said Adam Wainwright, <laughs> let him leave. But you I want him, to let's throw I Lester to it. I always do. <laughs> Uh, you and I've been going on about it for a while, I guess, individually, but a lot of the guys here and on this, you know, podcast have said the same thing about Wayne, Wright. I mean, it, it, he's going to be in what, probably the top five in multiple categories, uh, you know, uh, Boyd and Brad, you guys have talked about it too, you know, in almost every single pitching category, he's not going to get a Cy young award, but he's going to take votes away from some other players that are deserving so it will definitely be an interesting uh, Cy Young voting process, but he's definitely going to get some votes. And what in today's day and age with Major League Baseball money and contracts is a Cy Young vote getter worth a lot more than we're paying him. And he's been our steady workhorse. Everyone else in the rotation has been down and out at some point. I mean, look at the rotation we've had from Lester to LeBlanc to Hap, all these guys that uh, we never would have thought would have been Cardinals. So it's pretty amazing feat. I mean, even Yachty's had some had some great numbers. I know people say he's not the Yachty of old. Of course, he's not the Yachty of old. But uh, I would rather have Yachty than than most of the other guys. And Kinsner has been a a good a good backup. And I guess I trail into Yachty because I always end up looping the two together. Uh, but seventeen wins is is a pretty big deal. Yeah, 
Definitely a big deal. And Zach, I know we, we talked about it a little bit last week too, but just seeing him, I mean, every time he takes the mound, we're, we're expecting a win. Um, it's, that's something that there's not too many pitchers on our rotation that I feel like can go the distance. You know, you, you kind of look at maybe five or six innings out of a guy and you're like, just get us through, you know, with Wainwright, it's, it's pretty well, you know, he's going to give you seven or eight, you know, how important is that? Extremely important. And I think too, um, you know, looking at what we have coming up, you know, we have a lot of guys that are getting healthy, but again, this guy's a competitor through and through. I mean, guys talk about it, you know, who aren't pitchers. There's really nobody who has in the, in the clubhouse that has a competitive spirit like he does. Um, and he's the reason that guys have kind of, you know, lifted their um, competitive mindset. So, you know, I think just the fact that you have a guy that you have the confidence in that can come in and pitch that many innings, or you, you think from the start that he's going to be able to go and doesn't matter if he's, you know, in the inning six and he's got 109 pitches, but, you know, if he's cooking, they're going to let him go back out there. I mean, they, they know what he's all about. Oh, for sure. And Brad, yeah, like you haven't been on for the last couple episodes, but you know, when Wainwright said that he wanted to return, I mean, we all kind of had that feeling that he would, but you know, it wasn't long after Yachty said he wanted to come back for one final year that uh, Wainwright followed suit. Uh, did you see that coming and how pumped are you that he is going to return for another season? Yeah, I, I honestly wasn't sure what was going to happen uh, with, with either of them. Um, I, I'm definitely glad to see that that they are returning. Um, I mean, as as Larry kind of, kind of said, right off in the sunset, um, if, if if we get Pujols in that DH, awesome. But um, yeah, it, it'll be nice to see um, see Wayno and Yachty kind of, kind of sail off in the sunset, and I, they're one of two of the most beloved Cardinals and who knows how long. And I mean, to see them bo- both go out together. They're the best of friends. So, I mean, I, I think this is how they're really wanting to, to end thing in their MLB career. And not, yet, not just that, but I mean, for them to make the wild card right now and, you know, next year they, they could do it again, but boy, knowing that they're both, you know, coming back next year, I'm not saying it takes away some of the pressure, but we thought, you know, if this is the last hurrah, what better way to go out than to win, you know, a World Series? How fun is it for you to see both these guys, but especially Wayno, uh, just really embracing the role as being the catalyst, you know, the ultimate battery that's leading our, our team to a wild card? Uh, it, it's great, isn't it? I mean, just like, I mean, you get pumped when you know it's Wayne White Day, right? I mean, it's just, it's just such a, you, you just, you know, I don't live in St. Louis, but if I did, that would be a ticket I would try and get, you know, all this season and all next season. Um, you know, something that we didn't say, and I think it's probably important is, I think I, I heard it, read it, I'm not sure exactly, but I think John Lester said when he came to the team, like the team embraced him right away. And Wayno was the guy who said, you're a Cardinal now, you know, and, and, and that's pretty huge. Right. I mean, so Wainwright as that veteran, as the face, I mean, Yachty's the face, two different faces of the same team, you know, these veterans come on board and you're Lester, man, you're coming from an arrival team. I mean, you know, jump two teams back, but uh, you know, for, for Wainwright to come over and say, you're a Cardinal now and welcome you. I mean, that, I mean, that made all the difference, I think. And, and, you know, Lester and Hap have been important to this run. So, I, mean, I mean, the ARP lineup, you know, as far as the pitching staff, you know, but it's crazy. They're they're just pitching. When we brought those guys that were, we needed guys throwing the ball across the plate, you know, so they brought that veteran presence, that experience, and, you know, having Wayne Wright lead the way is just unreal. But I'll, you know, kind of talk about three guys that all have hit their 30 home run marks and Tyler O'Neill, Nolan Arenado, and Paul Goldschmidt. We talked that, especially with Nolan and – Goldschmidt, you know, at the end of the year, the back of their baseball card looks the same. They, they're they guaranteed to hit, you know, certain numbers. I mean, that's just expected. O'Neill to hit 30 home runs. I think some of us were on the fence of if this was his potential, he could do it. But how surprised are you that, hey, this is the first time we've had three 30 home run guys in quite a while, and especially one at third base. How important is the home run ball in this win streak and getting it turned around, Larry? 
Well, the first thing is I do want to give credit to Chris Lawless. All off season in our discussions, it was all about Mr. O'Neill. So he did uh, <clears throat> he did Nostradamus on that one there. And uh, but all in all, I mean, we want we all want to see the moving of the base runners, the timely hits, but the home runs are nice especially when he came in and we were losing like the Saturday game I was at that he came in, hit the two run bomb that put us back in, in the lead. And that was nice. It, it is a momentum changer, a home run. Um, and then to have three of them and especially for how many years we begged for a third baseman with power. And, you know, we thought maybe Matt was going to, you know, Matt hit Matt Carpenter hit, hit 30 home runs. Um, so it did happen. Um, but the thing was, we know now we're getting a gold glove caliber at third and the home runs. And then also we had the group that everybody was saying, you know, Goldie's done, you know, he's done. We got him past his prime for him to come hit 30 and still play the gold glove caliber defense at first base is just fantastic. So the three guys all have not only the 30 home runs, but they're also gold glove candidates. So that's the other thing on top of it. So it's amazing on both sides of the, both sides of the diamond. So. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Like I said, defense and offensively, these guys are just, you know, lights out Jared, you know, I'll, Kind of shoot it to you. I mean, we've talked about Bader and O'Neill being like the the young guys of who's going to have the breakout year, but both of them, you know, basically having gold glove defense. Uh, Bader kind of started off a little, a little not so good with some injuries. I think that set him back offensively. But again, to have the three home run, three thirty home run guys. What are your thoughts on the home run ball and how important that is, Jared? The home run is where today's baseball is at. Nobody wants to see. I mean, people do like no hitters, but nobody wants to see a, a ball game with no offense. I still am a fan of the low scoring pitchers duel, but most people are not. Uh, people want to see the big fly. They want to see the home run. And uh, it is pretty exciting. And just watching O'Neill crush him out of uh, out of the park and literally out of the park is uh, impressive. I mean, you can't uh, you can't see that everywhere. So. Uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun. It's been interesting. I, it's been good to see Tyler O'Neill again. I was watching some of our old uh, podcasts today while I was doing stuff here at the house, and you you called Tyler O'Neill to have a big year because we were complaining about the other outfielders. So uh, I hate you. And uh, basically, uh, he's coming into his own. And Bader did just recently qualify for Gold Glove, so I mean, he may have the chance. The only thing, like you said, I would see him maybe not winning is because he's missed a lot of games. I can see that being the only thing keeping him back. Aaron Otto's definitely not getting one this year. He's made some great plays, but I think he's got 11 or 12 errors over at third. So, but the Cardinals did just lose. So Zach, you can say, shave your uh, fucking beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you guys shit. You know, you asked me about the whole Tyler O'Neill thing. I am wearing a Canada jersey with a maple leaf on the side. So the Canadian <laughs> lady crusher that they're calling Tyler O'Neill right now, uh, I'm a big fan of his, but uh, yeah, that, that got to you. You, the three 30 home run guys, we, we wanted some power in this lineup. We thought, you know, maybe we need to go address that by trading or signing a power bat, but they've stuck with, you know, giving you know, guys like him and Bader a chance, a full go. And I think it's really paying dividends to see what they finally can finally can do in a season. Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, if you look at this and also what we have coming up the pipeline with potentially Gorman, who's supposed to be a big power hitter, um, everybody who heard Mo talk about moving in the fence, it doesn't really sound like such a bad idea. Um, you know, that's just going to be more excitement, more long balls. Um, I'm, re I'm really indifferent on that. But yeah, I mean, Tyler O'Neill really came into his own um, this year. And I think, you know, we probably have the outfield that we're going to have for the foreseeable future. I mean, these guys are all young. They could be, um, you know, in St. Louis, if, if the organization plays their cards, right. And these guys keep healthy and playing well, then, I mean, they could be next decade worth of our outfield. And I think I would still like to see Bader be a little bit more consistent as far as from month to month. Um, you know, I don't expect to keep him keep on this tear, but I mean, even just, you know, consistently, um, you know, getting hits and moving guys around, which I think we will, um, but time will tell for sure. And Brad, what do you think? I mean, it, like I said, we wanted to bring some power bats here. It looks like we've got some, and that, that helps, I think. O'Neill has made the point when you've got guys around you like Goldschmidt and Arenado kind of helps you out, you know. And, you know, guys like uh, Carlson and Edmund as table setters, I think there's not really the glaring holes that sometimes – 
early in the season when we were struggling that we thought, you know, we had. So having that that pop, I think, really does put some fear in some pitchers' minds. Yeah, well, I'll also remember Chick dig the long ball too. So, um, yeah, the the power boost that, that we've seen the, this year, I, I think, was much needed. I mean, for the past couple of years, we we've said we we need that power bat. We need that power bat. Well, we we got Goldie Carpenter kind of filled the void there a little bit, um, but he he started tailing off. Mal Arenado. And I mean, no one really expected Tyler O'Neill to hit 30 this year. Um, I mean, well, <laughs> beside you, <laughs> um, but that that potential for the 30 homers was always there with him. It, it was just a matter of him always putting it together. And I mean, he's this off season. He he made much needed changes and. It, it's worked. And ever since she moved him up to the three hole and Cardinals have looked like a totally different lineup stick having Goldie, Tyler O'Neill, and then Arenado. We're a totally di- different lineup now. Yeah. And I think the big thing with O'Neill, which by the way, I only had him pegged for about 25 home runs, but I think, you know, making contact where we were afraid he was feast or famine, all power and not being able to make contact, you know, where he's getting base hits and doubles. The guy is really putting it together where I think he's seeing the ball well, and maybe he is getting some better pitches to see by getting moved up to that spot. But, boy, how important is this? I mean, not not just him, but you got the mainstays on the corners that are getting it on offensively. I mean, it, it is a sight to see. And at least you know when you've got that kind of pop that you can, maybe not will, but you can score some runs at any point during the game. Yeah, so I'm going to go with uh, the unpopular opinion to, to some of the group, and that's uh, O'Neill did great and deserves all the credit he's getting. But, Chris, I think, like, you could hit seven or eight home runs if you were hitting between Goldie and Arenado, right? I, I, so I'm going to give, like, huge props to Mo. You know, I, I, I think getting Goldie and then a couple years later getting Arenado, knowing what he had, to put around them, you know, Carpenter wasn't coming through. We had the disappointment with DeYoung, who probably would have filled that role. But I mean, O'Neill hitting between those two guys—that's fantastic. I mean, if you're O'Neill, and and Schultz calls you in and says, "Hey, uh, I'm going to change the lineup a bit. Do you mind hitting after, you know, after uh, Arenado and or after Goldie?" And you're like, "I mean, it, it, uh, you just won the lottery. I mean, you just won the lottery." And and he came through. I mean, give him credit because he 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 took that role. And he came through and he came through bigger than anybody knew other than Chris. <laughs> now you didn't, you didn't predict 30 home runs though, right? No, just 20, 25 though. I did predict 25. Okay. That's, that's close and I was being very optimistic, you know, hoping that he would get that. I was uh, going to make that same, that same point about Aaron on and Goldshine. I'm glad you brought it up because that's a, that's a huge benefit for him. Not saying he wouldn't have had a good year, like you said too, but that's a huge factor. Like you look at tonight's lineup and, Bader left, uh, I think, like six guys on base, struck out multiple times. I mean, that taking out four or five major players like Edmund and Goldschmidt and Arenado, that totally changes the dynamic of our lineup. Yeah, for sure on that, too. And, you know, switching gears from, you know, the, the offense to the pitching, I know we touched on Adam Wainwright, um, but looking at the bullpen and the, the way that Mo didn't just go out and he got Lester and Hap and LeBlanc before that to kind of fill a void to go and get TJ McFarlane and Garcia who have really been just solid in that bullpen. And then looking at guys like, I know Reyes had his little, you know, bumpy time. Uh, Gallegos has really been, you know, lights out, you know, since he's been closing and Cabrera who, I mean, on any given night, he can mow you down. How important is this bullpen? And do you think this bullpen, uh, heading into the, the wild card. I mean, do you think that's a true weapon for the Cardinals going forward? Larry, go ahead. I, uh, I think that a lot of that has been, you know, they, they kind of move those guys around moving pieces to find their niche. And I think that when Reyes started to struggle, you know, it was kind of that, okay, what do we do? And Garcia and, and uh, uh, Gio come on and did a great job. And then, you know, picking up Garcia and, um, Oh, what's the other kid we just picked up? Um, oh, 
my mind's blank right now. McFarland. McFarland, thank you. And those guys, I mean, again, we didn't spend a bunch of money to get those guys. And the rest were in-house. They just had to find their roles, their niche. And that's, I think that's a credit to Schilt to keep moving those pieces till you find where they fit. And, and you know, you can play horrible baseball in May and June, but if you're still playing in October, that's all that matters. Yeah, I think some of it, too, is, you know, starting pitchers going a little bit deeper. I know earlier in the season it was like we barely getting through four innings. So you're taxing the bullpen, you know, mightily there. Uh, one of the biggest things that I – argued about Schilt and how he handles the bullpen is if a guy like McFarland would go out one game and get out of the inning and and five pitches let's just say um, I know you got the three batter minimum type thing but instead of like putting him back out for a second inning and resting a guy a day where you say guy goes you're just not pitching today we you know we've got this it, he was just hell bent on the seven eight nine slots you know and I think that was wearing these guys out but when you've got now Woodford called up um, and you've got Flaherty and Hudson doing this whole piggyback thing, I think this bullpen could really be more of a weapon than what we've even seen so far. What say you on that, Jared? I agree with you hundred percent. And a lot of it, it's, it's funny how many factors, you know, that go into this because, you know, it does start with starting pitching, being consistent and, and going deep into games and providing you with innings uh, it's also limiting the walks, which they were absolutely horrendous at walking the opposing batter, but they've definitely cut that way back. And it's it's mixing the right pieces and everyone that wants to fire, you know, Schilt Mazalock like every time we lose a game. But, you know, we were in a bad position and we didn't have a lot of hopes for making, but they still went out and made moves. They weren't going to go out and trade the farm away. We We knew that, uh, but they went out and made moves like getting LeBlanc, like getting Hap, like getting Lester you know, bringing in McFarland and finding these guys to try to piece something together to at least try to stay competitive. And we also talk about all the time, you know, like teams like the Yankees and the Red Sox, you know, they're, they're barely making and slugging it out with each other. And they're, you know, and they've got all these expensive, you know, guys making a ton of money, just like the Padres. It's about finding that right combination. You know, Larry always made the comments about, you know, the Padres having the, you know, $700 million infield. And look, they, they were eliminated from the postseason contention and everyone, myself included, thought they were a sure lock. So, I mean, it's finding the right pieces to make things work, just like 2011, you know, that trade of Colby Rasmus and bringing in Edwin Jackson and Dotel and those guys that just seemed to work. And, you know, it's chemistry and all these pieces are working, but uh, my question for you, Chris, is you got you're in a wild card, okay? Uh, we talked about Matt Carpenter probably not making the roster. Do you take Andrew Miller? Uh, I, you know, if you're really, uh, it, it's one thing. Same same with the Matt Carpenter. You you almost want to say, hey, I want to ride with the guys that got us there. But looking at their contr- you know contributions, is it really those guys that got you there? I know that they are there are pieces to the puzzle, but are they pivotal pieces? And, you know, in the case of Miller, I know you've got uh, Hudson up right now. Actually, I think Hicks, was he throwing in Memphis, you know, earlier? And I'm not saying he's ready, but I just don't, I don't think Miller or Carpenter really brings anything that could contribute to a team win at this point. I think they'll carry both, but personally, I mean, I know it'd be a slap in the face, especially with both of them. Uh, this is the last year under contract. It would be a real slap in the face for them to do that. Um, but, I, I mean, it would make sense to well, not. For the, wild, for the wild card, do you think they would take him? Because you can reset your – if they make it past, they can pick a new roster after that. But do you think they'd take Andrew Miller to that one-game wild card? Is he on the roster? Probably is and shouldn't be. I mean, that would be my, my guess on that. Yeah, you're probably right. I hate that, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I one one thing I'll add on that the one thing he does bring is that His playoff uh, experience. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're right though, but I know you're gonna say it before <laughs> Mo and Schilt do. So I know <laughs> the that postseason experience uh, that run the Indians had a couple years ago. He he does bring that. So that that would be kind of the only thing I I would say have Miller on but didn't they lose <laughs> we're, we're, we're not going to talk about that because, <laughs> I yeah. wish we had that Andrew Miller because that's a well he was yeah. good that, that year they just over pitched him I mean coming down they just over pitched him that's what happened he got exposed he's tired 
Um, well, and maybe he'll uh, go to the you know the IL with a blister on his big toe. That might be a uh, you know something that could happen. Zach, what are your thoughts on this bullpen right now? It's just getting better and better. I mean, as far as you know, like I said, you add Hudson and Jack to it. Um, you know, I really I think people are going to fear this team. I mean, they're hitting. Their pitching's getting healthy at the right time. Um, you know, if if you're the Dodgers, I think you know you you know really have some things to consider as far as you know who you might face. Because for us, you know, we didn't win a hundred and whatever games, and and we're not you know, we're going to this the underdog, but we have a lot of momentum more so than them. I think we're the best team obviously this month. And then the giants are the second best team after that. It gets really, you know, everybody's pretty even that's in the playoff picture. So I think if you're them, um, you're scared. Well, you know, Brad, I know you just kind of said that you would throw Andrew Miller in there just based on uh, the playoff experience, but you know, from what you've seen, not just from him, but the, the young guys where there's, you know, Reyes, I know he had his struggles, but yeah, it's just nice to see that we do have some weapons down there in the pen that I think this team is going to need, not just in the wild card, but if they advance, um, you're going to need some guys that can eat innings in the bullpen just in case something does happen. Yeah, I mean, it, it was nice to see, um, like, McFar- McFarlane and uh, Garcia and those guys that we picked up that we thought were, like, bottom heap of the pile – they're they're doing what we wanted them to eat innings, pitch well. If if they get us far, that's off. That's awesome. Okay. I with with our bullpen. I mean, yeah, Reyes has struggled a little bit, um, but I mean he he's really just prone to to the home run ball. If he can kind of keep keep that a in the park, he should be fine. Um, but what what was kind of looking to be our weakness midseason is now looking more towards one of our strengths. How how uh, what would the landscape be if LeBlanc didn't get hurt? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean LeBlanc was he was a good stopgap, you know, when he came and you know, again, it's kind of a uh, you got to give Mo credit or Gersh credit, you know, to go out and make these moves that they were not, they were not sexy guys to bring in that you're like, yeah, everybody was clamoring. Oh, go get a Max Scherzer. And, you know, come find out. It's like, he didn't want to play in the Midwest. You'd had to probably part with some top guys. You're bringing in some very affordable pieces. I know in the case of Lester and Hap, you know, the very experienced on, you know, having some high leverage games that, you know, that kind of mentality, I think this team needed, um, but dumpster diving and getting like a McFarlane and Garcia Boyd, what, what do you think on guys like that, that they are not household names, you go out and bring them in. And it's like, they, they say it's Cardinal devil magic. Everybody would bring up is like contributing at a high level uh, and they aren't household names. So that that's kind of a cool thing on a flip side of having household names, like a Wainwright and Molina, you got guys that the underdogs getting it done. I love every time you ask Boyd a question because he looks like he works for the fucking team and he's in the <laughs> locker room right now. Just he getting, looks like he's a coach or a scout. Look, he's he's the, the grounds crew guy. I, I was coach just getting ready to say, we're going to toss it over to the Cardinals. <laughs> you should have introduced him. <laughs> like like the 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 how's, how's it going in the locker room tonight? Yeah. <laughs> you fit that damn locker room. It's pissing me this off. Is, this is like, this is my first one, right? I had to dress up a little bit. I mean, you know, I, 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 had, a t- I had a Cardinal t-shirt on all day. And I swapped it for this to look good for you guys. I brought you in and said, join us tonight from ESPN uh, covering the Cardinals as Boyd Harder. And you would have fit right in. <laughs> so I, I don't even remember what the question was at this point. The, no, the, 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 the unknown names, right? Right? Something. So it's, um, you know, they're like the devil magic thing, right? I don't know that we rely on it, but man, it pops its head up every time we need it. And, uh, you know, with that, I look at these guys – I looked at their stats because the bullpen guys, I don't know them as deep as I know the other players. I don't think any fans really know them quite as deep, you know, talking about a bullpen, like praising a bullpen or talking against a bullpen, those guys can prov- prove you wrong, like immediately. Cause that's a mental game. That's, that's not this, this that, that's, that's that game switches back and forth quick. And it's, it's kind of scary. And if these guys regress to their career norm, you know, and it, it can get ugly fast, but, there's no reason to think that's going to happen. 
you know, these guys are, these guys are hitting on all cylinders. And I think we talked about it way back at the beginning of the podcast, man, winning confidence. That's contagious. And you know, these guys, the starter does well, the levers are going to come in and lift him up and the hitters are going to come in and hopefully build leads for us. And those guys have a couple runs they can give up if, if, if need be. So I don't know, man, I just, it's, it's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about the bullpen. If you really think about it coming into the, the playoff game, um, we have 10 starting pitchers right hmm. now on the roster with Hudson and Flaherty and LeBlanc had made number 11. <laughs> so, you know, that's right there. Okay. So you guys go out and pitch one inning a piece all out, and then we'll turn it over to Garcia. And, <laughs> and that's, go why, on that's why I went back. Here. That's why I was asking the Andrew Miller question, right? Because I could see Carpenter making the team before Miller, because you go look, especially in a wild card game, you're going to have, you know, Hap, and Lester, you're going to have all these guys available out of the bullpen. So you're going to have Lester, Hap, uh, McFarland, Cabrera. You're going to have all these guys already. I mean, who? I guess you have to decide who you're going to take and who you're not going to take. But it'll be, it'll be interesting. But McFarland used to pitch here. He played here in Arizona for several years, and he was actually he had like one year where his ERA was like two. In the rest, he was you know in the in the low fours or whatever. But you know here you it's almost a guy you know Andrew Miller's leaving. You're going to have money. Uh, there's nobody really blowing the doors off in the minor leagues. I mean, I would, I would make him a contract offer to try to extend him at the end of the season. McFarland just reminds me so much of Zepchinski, you know, that the whole delivery and being a lefty. And uh, I think he's made that comparison too, you know, in, in interviews with Jim Hayes. Um, but, you know, one, one thing that the season you know, isn't over where the, the Giants and the Dodgers are still battling it out. I know we've kind of touched on it a little bit last week on who we would rather face in that one game wild card. More than likely, it's going to be the Dodgers. But, you know, you never know for sure. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on who gets that start? Obviously, Wainwright is the guy, you know. And I, I know Dave, uh, for the Dodgers, he's basically said that Max Scherzer is going to be starting that wild card game. I know fans would love to see a Scherzer versus, versus Wainwright uh, wild card. Is that what you see lining up if that's the team we face? And is that the team you want to face, Larry? Um, I've said all along, I'd rather face the Dodgers in the one game because anything could happen in one game. I think we don't match up well in, in a longer series with them just because they do have the big four. I mean, they've got, well, three now, I guess. So their big three are all Cy Young guys capable. Um, as far as Wayne, I was starting, I'm going to go against the grain again here because I just, in his past, he's not succeeded that well in game sevens or the, the championship games. He really has it in his career. So to me, I would probably go uncharacteristic. I'd probably start a Reyes or somebody and just let him throw all out, bring the heat first three, first inning. And then I would play inning by inning and just use a bullpen game because the Dodgers, we know they're having to think past that game. So they're having to look at games one and two of the next series where we don't have that option. So I would just throw it out there, man. I mean, like I said, we've got 10 potential starters. Why not a Hudson or a Flaherty or even, you know, maybe not Flaherty so much. I, I think he's had, I think the Dodgers have had his number as well. So I can't believe you said Alex Ray is starting that game. And I'm just crazy. like, again, that's something nobody's going to be thinking of. And you let that guy unleash all of he's got. And you know what I mean? And I, I really think the kid's got the potential. And, and then how, how soon everybody would forget about the blown saves if he came in and shut the Dodgers down. What would happen on the flip side of that if he goes out there and gives up four or five runs in an inning? I got to run it. Dude. He so sure isn't going to start next. What, what if Wainwright does it? What if, you know, anybody does it? Good I mean, point. So, I mean, I remember a kid a couple years ago came in and pitch for pitch against Kershaw and we ended up winning the game. And sure. nobody thought that was going to happen in Michael Walker. So, oh, you know, man. and then your boy hit the, you know, hmm. home run off of him, put it into him too. So, you know, all everything, anything can happen in those games. And that's my point. But, Come out and have fun. Just keep doing what you're doing now, man. Just win at all costs. Yeah, I know it'll be definitely all hands on deck, you know, for that wild card game. And that does mean guys like a Flaherty and Hudson. But, Jared, you know, what say you on that? Do you, do you prefer the Giants, you know, over the Dodgers in that mm -hmm. one game? And do you just have to automatically give Wainwright the ball and be like, you've earned it, man? Uh, well, I, I agree partially with Larry. Uh, I would like to play the Dodgers as well. And I feel like the Dodgers are the better team, but I think of that past of history of, 
you know, every year we played the Dodgers in the playoffs, we always did well against them and, and ended up eliminating them. So, you know, the Giants have been the opposite for us. They've eliminated us numerous times and made us look like fools. And I know those were different players, but still, I think it's a whole mentality thing. Hey, we've came here, we've done this before. And you definitely have to give the ball to to Wainwright to start that game. I mean, everyone's going to be on a short leash regardless. So the minute he gets in trouble, he's not going to be in there very long. And you're going to have everybody, you know, like we kind of talked about it in Larry mentioned with all the pitchers, it's going to be all hands on deck. So someone gets, if Wayno gets in trouble, second, third inning, he's, he's out, you know, he's done. There's going to be a lot of, other than the three, you know, batter minimum rule, there's going to be a lot of pitching changes or, or it could be just a, a duel. And a lot of with Wainwright with, you know, changing his delivery type, he changes, you know, his pitches, his speed, he does different things that a lot of these Dodger hitters still aren't going to be too familiar with. So I would rather, it's kind of like throwing a different pitcher at him than throwing a guy, they're used to seeing guys that throw, you know, 98 miles an hour. But so uh, you, if you don't give the ball to Wainwright, you got a, you got a big problem. And then you lose that game. Everyone's going to say, why didn't you give your ace and your Cy Young vote getting starting pitcher uh, the ball to start the game. But uh, I like the atmosphere. I like going to LA. I mean, I like as loud as the crowd gets. I mean, We've always had good history there other than Matt Holiday taking a ball to the dick. It's been a good, it's been a good uh, venue for us. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's, it's crazy because I'll, I'll agree with that. You know, I would, I think the Dodgers, while I say they are a better team, I mean, it's hard to make that case when the Giants have owned that division all year long, you know, and they haven't really looked back from leading it all year long. But when it comes to a one game play in, I, I think, you know, you're playing the Dodgers. You just have that one game against Scherzer, which is not going to be an easy task by any means. But if you happen to play the Giants and get in, then you're looking at having to face all the aces from the Dodgers, and that's that's a tough task. Well, and the only thing, too, and before you kick it to somebody else, that's one reason why I wanted them to kind of run. I would rather them had a good lineup out tonight against the Brewers and half-ass it against the Cubs because I think us playing the Brewers so well and beating them as well as we have been as of late – is very good mentally for the team. And it's also demoralizing for the Brewers. So if we end up meeting them down the road, uh, you know, we, you know, we clean their clock the last numerous games until tonight because we just mailed it in. But that's kind of why I wanted to see more of a competitive game because that's a potential playoff opponent and the Brewers have the, have it all locked down. They're not changing their position. They still ran their top lineup out there. And I kind of wanted us to do the same to keep it that way. And then, then mail it in against the Cubs because they don't mean anything. No, I totally agree. I mean, the, the mindset, you know, if the Brewers, you know, losing to us, that, that does kind of, you know, fuck with them a little bit. Um, and not to get off topic, but, I mean, I guess you guys had heard the news about Devin Williams and his celebration and breaking his hand and then needing surgery. That's kind of happened a little way too much in baseball with some just fluke injuries on some stupid shit. Yeah, What's one of those guys. Go ahead. Right. We had one of those guys, right? With Reyes. Yeah. Did. I mean, you know, and that is, he wasn't an established, you know, starter. I mean, it was. We had, we had David Freeze get drunk and break his ankles twice. <laughs> yeah. So. Zach, what do you think on that? I mean, not, not just the Devin Williams thing, but, you know, we talked last week about the Dodgers and seeing that Scherzer Wainwright matchup. Is that something that, is is that the right you want to see the, the team go is hand the ball to Wayne Wright and have two Cy Young candidates battling it out? Yeah, I know last week we kind of talked about how maybe in the past Wayne Wright didn't always like, you know, big games weren't really his forte or, you know, he wasn't anything spectacular. But I think if I go back and I look at last year, um, what he did in that, I think it was a game three loss against the Braves. Um, you know, he had that shutout. And I think it's not lost on Wayne Wright that right now, he is like one player, one injury away from just being done, you know, because there's there's really not probably going to come back from anything that, that happens to him now. And so he's going to go out there and I think we're going to get the best version of him, you know, that we've seen yet um, with, you know, partnering that with his competitive spirit. Um, and I, I think, you know, the playoff magic with the Cardinals versus the Dodgers, it's going to be something where, you know, you're going to have – Scherzer in there. I think we might give him a run for his money, and then they're going to have to bring in uh, um, Kershaw, and we're just going to shell the shit out of him. I mean, that's my take on it. It's what's going to happen. It's what I hope happens anyway, because we all love seeing Kershaw just, you know, 
look like he's about to cry on national television. But um, as far as, yeah, players doing stupid stuff, I mean, it just seems like, you know, young guys just don't really realize what they have in the moment. You know what I mean? They do stuff to screw it up. I mean, we've had a bunch of guys that whether it's big, uh, you know, punching walls or just even like Carlos Martinez and going to the strip club and then having altercations outside of that, you know, just like these guys, I mean, they're human, they make mistakes, but you also got to realize like, Hey, like you're about to be at the pinnacle of the season here and you just can't use your brain. Right. So my, my guess is he probably got a little too drunk in the celebration and you know, that wall probably looked like it was paper mache or something. (laughs) Yeah. What what do you think on that, Brad? I mean, not just that fluke injury, but again, you know, to kind of shoot the same question, is it the Dodgers that you'd rather face or the Giants? And is that matchup something that, you know, is what you're wanting to see giving the ball to Wayne Wright, or do you feel more comfortable maybe going a different route there? Yeah, I've gone back and forth on this. Um, we, we played the Giants better this year than we have the Dodgers. So, I mean, statistically, we, we might have a better shot against the Giants in that one game. Um, but, I mean, I don't think we match up well against the Dodgers in a longer series. I mean, they're going to be throwing out Walker Buehler, Max Scherzer, Julio Arias, um, Clayton Kershaw. I mean, that's a four-headed monster that no team wants to face, I don't think. Um, So I kind of lean Dodgers just so we can, I mean, like like we said, stay stay away from that their pitching staff. Um, I mean, anything could happen that that one game. Um, I I would definitely go Wayno. I'd love to see Wayno versus Scherzer, or maybe it's Gossman if the Giants uh, get that wild card. But uh, yeah, I. You, you got to go Wayno. I mean, he gives us the best chance to win. And if he doesn't pitch to what we think he should, I mean, that leash is probably going to be a little bit shorter because it is the postseason. Anyone and everyone is going to be ready to pitch. I mean, you, you could even bring in Hap, right, third, fourth inning if, if Wayno's struggling. So, I, I mean, you, you just have to start Wayno. There's no other choice. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think, you know, in a wild card game, not that it's going to screw with a guy like Wayne Wright's confidence, but even in the first inning, I think you have somebody out there in the bullpen playing soft toss just in case something does happen. I mean, you got to have, like I said, all hands on deck. Um, so I think that's the obvious choice is giving it to Wayne Wright. But, you know, what, what are your thoughts, Boyd? I mean, you've got maybe other options, but Wayne Wright does make the most sense. I don't even think it's a discussion, to be honest. I think, you know, he's our, our veteran. He's the face of the team. He's earned this. He's had a stellar year. I, I mean, I, I, I totally get what Larry and others are saying. I mean, but being right might not be the most important thing, right? I mean, you can't justify to that team, to the teammates themselves, that Wayne Wright's not starting. Can you imagine sitting down with Yachty? And telling him that Reyes is going to start, I mean, you just can't do it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not in that room, man. I, I, that's there's two guys in baseball that scare me when, when you have to win. One is Molina, right? You do not get in the way of that guy. Unfortunately, the other guy is Scherzer. And you know, I live in Virginia. DC is our closest ballpark. I probably went to to Nationals games four, five, six times a year when he's pitching. I've seen that guy pitch more than probably any other pitcher in baseball. In the last few years, the guy's intense. I mean, think Chris Carpenter and take it up two notches. I mean, he's he is scary. The only good thing we have is he does give up the home run. That's his that's his Achilles. And uh, you know, so there, maybe there's something there. You know, hopefully, hopefully we can get him and and, and knock some out of the park on him early and and rattle him up. So yeah. I'll say real quick in 13 lifetime appearances, which. I didn't realize Max Scherzer pitched, pitched for Arizona. That's how much I don't pay attention to his early career. Um, 13 starts against St. Louis. He is four wins, six losses, and three no decisions. Yeah. I could tell you – I could I could give you the detail of every one of those starts because that goes back to 
those nationals teams that were, were intimidated by St. Louis. And, uh, and we had some pretty good teams at that time also, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to look up the uh, splits of some of our middle, middle of the order guys against Scherzer and see how they, how they, how they, how they stack up. Cause um, the Dodgers have no, St. Louis does not intimidate the Dodgers. I mean, clearly right now with our streak, we're intimidating everybody, but the Dodgers aren't coming into this thinking, Oh my gosh, I hope we can escape this wild card game. You know, they throw put Scherzer out there. They're going to expect to win this, even with our streak, even with all our great stuff, you know, that, that team, they're defending champions and they, they're going to expect to win everything. So yeah, but the Mike and Kershaw is going to say they can be this. Uh, <laughs> let's not jack up this one game because the pressure's on us as defending champions. It'd be tough. You're right, Boyd, going to LA playing the defending champions Dodgers in, in their house and that huge stadium that will be packed and very loud. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. That's is though, Matt Holiday's nuts. St. Louis has no pressure on them. We were not supposed to be here, yeah. so you know that's the thing. And they do. And then, you, and then of course, you know the money always comes in. They're the you know one of the highest paid play, teams and the spenders. So you know that's the pressure on them as well. So if we come in and maybe that's the whole thing. You know they. The money spent, we're not supposed to be playing for a one game playoff life. We're supposed to be winning divisions. Well, I think the Padres thought that too. <laughs> I think it's, a, I think the Dodgers have a lot of pressure, regardless if they play us or the Giants, uh, because the Giants are the same way. They were supposed to be, you know, the worst team. And they've had guys come in like, you know, uh, like Brad said, like Gosman. They've got Logan Webb has been amazing. He was on my fantasy team, which I won the championship and beat Chris. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> who, who, beat, who beat you one game this year? Oh, and I knew that was coming. I was waiting uh, for it. But they've had, they've had a lot of those players, look kind of like how we have had that have kind of came in and did the job that nobody was expecting. Buster Posey has revitalized himself. You know, whenever we got Goldschmidt, you know, before COVID, he came in and he was that last year at Arizona. He was batting like just a little over two hundred. Everyone said he's washed up and he's got thirty bombs and hitting just under three hundred this year. So. I mean, it, the pressure is definitely going to be on everyone else. I do like, you know, how Boyd said, I do like us in a one game just because the intensity and what the Card if the Cardinals come in and they start connecting, they get a run or two, watch out because it could be a, an interesting game. But those pitcher duels within the one game with the Cardinals scare me because, as we all know, they're either scoring runs and hitting the ball or they are just, you know, can't hit themselves out of wet paper bag. So it'll be interesting to see how that happens. One of the things that, you know, I, I've seen Adam Wainwright kind of make a comment, and I've, I put up some posts, too, as well about it. You know, about the beginning of the month, you know, Fangraphs having us at a 2% chance to where we're at right now. Now, looking back, though, at the preseason stuff, Fangraphs had us as an 88-win team, which we are currently, I believe, at 88 wins. And they had the Brewers, I believe, at 94 wins. So, really, Fangraphs isn't too far off of how they had the preseason predictions. Now, granted, nobody could see the – shitty baseball that we were playing for so long where we couldn't throw the ball over home plate and we're, you know, hitting batters like it was going out of style. Um, but, you know, to come as far as they have, you know, this last stretch of baseball, to have a 2% chance to making it, that is unbelievable. But I, I kind of think it's a slight at fan graphs that's like, oh, man, they got all this shit wrong. No, they're pretty damn accurate on, you know, just a few games here and there are difference. You know, what say you guys on that? Uh, the one thing, the one thing I will give credit to this team as well is everybody bags on our pitching coach and everything else and Maddox and stuff. And Lester, when he came in, he said that Maddox and Wainwright sat him down and they said, here's what you're doing wrong. And that really impressed me a lot from a veteran pitcher to say that, because, you know, we've heard all years, Maddox, you know, the guys are hitting batters. We're giving up the home runs. We're not pitching. And for a veteran like Lester to come in and make that comment really, really shocked me first because I, I mean, we all did. I'm sorry. We all thought Lester was an ass. I'm sorry. There's the truth. But now he comes in, he makes a comment like that. And you kind of look at it and you go, well, maybe, maybe Maddox does know what he's doing. So, I mean, this season's been fun. I don't care. Honestly, I hope we win it all. Don't get me wrong. But I think this has been one hell of a season from where we started to where we are now. Yeah. I'm more hated Lester, but he was so, you know, we, the Red Sox and the Cubs, you know, he was just, you know, an enemy for so long, but a good competitor. And I think a lot of that with him, he he had a bit of adjustment after he left the Cubs and he didn't have his, I think those personal catchers are not healthy for a lot of people. You know, how 
he had Ross for so long, you know, and like that was that was his guy. And I can't remember who the hell uh, who did the who did the um, the Red Sox, you know, the, Tim Wakefield. He threw the knuckleball. Who and I'm getting off track, but he uh, had like Doug his Mangrelli, own. I think. Yeah, and, th- and I think like when he got traded later, like they had to trade for his catcher because he had to have him or whatever. <laughs> but you know, some of that stuff can also affect people mentally, but. And more importantly, does anyone else not remember Matt Holiday getting hit in the nuts by a ball in L.A.? I don't remember it. <laughs> it was hilarious, and I can never find a picture or video of it. But I remember they were like, right in the, the stomach area. It was right in the balls. It was hilarious. It's my well, quite as bad as Molina taking one. His nut shot was pretty damn brutal. I can't watch a replay of that. Yeah. I think rumor is he's missing one now. He's going no, he knows where now. it's at. He's not missing. He knows where it's at. <laughs> well, now he's only it's in two. a jar. <laughs> no, it's Velcroed onto his catching gear. <laughs> it's stick with that spider tack shit. Uh, Larry, I know but, well, like we got a couple more things we can touch on before we wrap the show up, but I think there was a group member, Annie Hassinger, that really wanted us to touch on the Mike Shannon career. You know, he's wrapping up 50 years in the booth. Um, she's a diehard fan. She, you know, tunes into every episode and she was like, I really want to hear you guys take on him because he does catch a lot of flack, especially from some of the impatient younger fans that are just ready to push him out of the booth. Now we all know that he has been slipping for years. It's been really hard to listen to him this year, but I think 50 years in the booth, he's earned it to go out the way that he's, you know, going to go out you know, just a few words on Mike Shannon and what his his voice has meant for so many of us. Well, I guess, you know, first and foremost, that we always, in this day and age, we, we're so accustomed to players jumping ship and moving. We don't realize Mike Shannon's been a Cardinal since 1962. He played 10 games in 1962 <clears throat> before all of y'all was born, including me. So that's how long he's been around. Uh, then on top of that, 1972 went in the booth. And he's been there for 50 years. He actually won an Emmy for his, for being in the, in the booth. So, you know, we've all know the Shannonisms, the, you know, the mistakes, the butchering of the names, but you know, heck me sitting here as a non-professional, I butcher names all night long, ask anybody. Um, we can't always keep it all straight. We, and who's, we our backup, hey, who's our backup catcher? Our backup catcher <laughs> right now is Kinzer. There you go. See, Kinizer, Kinenzer. <laughs> Because again, I tell you, I have a guy who lives here spells exactly the way his name is Kenizer. And so that throws me off every time. I don't care. I think you still said it wrong. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. But it's fun. I don't care. So, but again, that's the thing. And I'm not 83 years old and I still screw up. So a lot of these fans are impatient. Um, the guy has deserved to go out. You know, we talk about Wayno and Yachty and their legendary status. This guy's been here a lot longer than they were born. So that's the other thing. Um, and he deserves that. Um, if he really bothers you, just like all the announcers seem to bother all these young guys, they have this button. It's called the mute button. Hit it. You can make up your own stories. The game plays out. But to Mike Shannon, you know, I, I, I grew up listening to Camel X. That's how I became a Cardinals fan. So, you know, him, they buck and those guys being on the radio, that was golden era, man. Uh, even Harry Carey back in the day, you listen to those old play casts, you know, those were the guys. Um, so that's a different era. It's gone and it will be missed. So, yeah, I just want to mention it because I know that Annie asked us to and Annie, you know, we appreciate you always tuning in and listen to us or watches. And also you, you comment and you're a diehard fan. We appreciate you as well. So. And Jared, you know, the thing is like McCarver caught a lot of the same flack, you know, a lot of fans were ready for him to move on. And I know some of the stories got redundant. You know, we heard the same stuff over and over, but at the end of the day, I think, when you hear these announcers that have stories about guys like Stan and Gibby and Lou, that we're not going to hear those same stories when guys like McCarver now out of the booth and Shannon leaving, you know, yes, we are blessed with having Edmonds and Brad Thompson and Ricky Horton. I think we've got an excellent all around career, even Rick Ankiel, you know, stepping in. I, I enjoy every one of our broadcasters, but to, to have someone like Shannon that's been there both on the playing side and in the booth, and he's seen so much Cardinal baseball and he had such a humor about him. Like, you know, some of it might've been a little tipsy, you know, too many drinks, but at the end of the day, it was like entertainment and a joy to listen to. I know, you know, radio broadcast, a lot of us got turned on to Cardinal baseball that way. So Jared, what, you know, some thoughts on Mike Shannon. Uh, you know, I, I love the Mike Shannon of old, you know, he, he has definitely gotten a little rougher these last, uh, especially this last year, year and a half, but 
I haven't heard him much. You know, I listened to a lot of uh, radio games because I was traveling and then, you know, doing stuff at my, my dad's house and then moving to the new house here. I didn't have the internet set up right away, so I wasn't watching it, but I was listening to the game and Shannon wasn't calling and it was a little different and it kind of looks like Rick Horton's going to be that guy. And, and I kind of think that's part of the disconnect with today's fans is that, you know, nobody listens to the game on the radio anymore. I grew up, you know, to where it was a big TV deal also when I lived outside of St. Louis, but my dad would watch the game and mute it and then put KMOX on the radio. And you would always know like when a home run was coming because they would be they would call it ahead of time before TV and then you could run to the TV and see it happen. But I grew up listening to Mike Shannon also. So, you know, I know a lot of people had Buck and I remember him a little bit. But, you know, as time went on, you know, Shannon was definitely that guy and he's going to be missed. But, you know, radio is a thing that and I think they need to change it because, you know, listen to the game on the radio is a thing of the past. You don't hear about it that much anymore unless you're listening to it on the app or, you know, on XM in your car. But you know, they still do it very old school. You know, it's Rick Horton and it's, you know, usually Claiborne and they alternate innings. There's not a lot of back and forth, you know, like we have here. And I do think it is outdated. And I, I and I was just listening to games on the radio, you know, during this win streak because I didn't want to miss anything. It was very outdated, the back and forth. And one thing I like about Mike Shannon is Mike Shannon would always count things back, you know, okay, you know, Bader's got his lead off sec, you know, he's three feet off. He's wearing the, you know, the blue uniform with the birds on the bat, you know, and the, the real second is keeping him close. Rick Horton does a good job, but he is not descriptive like that. There were several times listening to the game on the radio term, like, what's going on again? Do we still, how many outs do we have again? But Shannon was always good about repeating that, letting you know, we've got two balls, two strikes. They're going to have a little conversation here, John, you know, but he would go back and forth, but you always knew what was going on in the radio, which is hard when you can't see it. And with him not being in the booth with Horton, although he did a good job, a lot of that was missing. So I, I definitely am not looking forward to listening to it on the radio anymore. Yeah, I'm with you there. I think John Rooney has really carried him a lot. You know, uh, he's another one that, like you said, will de describe the uniforms and, you know, kind of paint that picture. And fans today, like you said, they're used to seeing it on TV. So listening, they're not really giving a shit about what the – other teams wearing they want to be reminded of hey, what the count is and all that you know on the flip side you see some of the fans that they're like why is guys like jim edmonds and them talking so much about you know their opinions on things it's like these guys are broadcasters but they're not just supposed to tell you ball strike out you know they, they've got to do more than just paint a picture but give some insight i think shannon did that from time to time but also that that humor and i think that was such an important part of listening to a broadcast is you're paying attention to the game and he would just come with one of his zingers that you know, my personal favorite was the whole like daylight savings time. And he's like, it's kind of like a mattress, you know, you spring forward and fall back, you know, and I just little things like that, that it would make me chuckle. And you I know, think that's daylight savings. Time. <laughs> yeah. Daylight savings time. <laughs> There it is. A mattress. What do you think? Alolicism. 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 Well, that's what he would compare it to. He's like, they like so many times like a mattress, you know, it's just weird shit that he would say. Like that. <laughs> Even now, if you think about it, like, you know, we were, you know, talking about McCarver and those guys. So these guys now they bounce around, they change teams so much. Well, at three days I spent in Washington with the nationals and I was with Scherzer for a day and a half. And I have this story about him and I, we showered, you know, like the Gibby stories, you know, and you're like, those guys don't, they're not going to do that anymore. Because their careers are over in a couple of weeks, you know, it's, it's just so weird. So, you know, and Boyd, and, Boyd and Zach and Larry can probably attest to this too. You, just one last thing on Shannon and I'll shut up. But whenever you're in a different market, like I'm in Arizona and these guys are in different areas, you definitely appreciate, you know, the guys like Dan McLaughlin and Mike Shannon on the radio and Edmonds and those guys, because the, the Diamondback guys are not very good at all. I can't stand listening to them at all. And they don't even know their typical baseball facts about some of their own guys. They'll give you some random stat that's incorrect, but you definitely come to appreciate it more when you don't live in the market. Well, the weird thing is right now, history's being made tonight. We didn't like the first all female uh, telecast. Isn't that tonight? And just hearing that, what's her name, Mendoza with A-Rod, I turn it off so fast, I can't stand it. And it could be a Cardinals-Dodgers game. I can't stand to hear those two talk. So, but yet, you know, because certain situations, that's what's put out there. And so that's the thing I grew up with. Like I said, the Harry Carey's that booming voice. And, and him, you know, ah, keep it over to you, Stoney. And, you know, and I'll have another Budweiser. You know, hell, those guys get fried if they talked about drinking a beer right now on TV. 
Yeah. Zach, what are your thoughts on, you know, Mike Shannon, the career, the man, the myth, the legend? Well, you know, I don't almost feel like I'm qualified to make a statement because 1962, my parents were born in 1962. So, um, no, uh, looking at it, um, you know. Larry he could be your dad. <laughs> <laughs> he could. What's uh, <laughs> Our boy. This one time in Iowa. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, he played nine seasons and then he went right from playing to broadcasting. I think that's just extremely rare. I think one thing I remember most about him is growing up, um, I might not be in the same room or like listening, but, you know, you, you knew what he was going to call a home run because he'd always be like, get up, get up. Oh, yeah. You know, that that's what I always remember, um, you know, as kind of his staple. And so I knew if I heard that the Cardinals were having a good day. Same question to you, you know, Brad. I know that's some people don't, you know, listen to many on the radio, but, you know, just his longevity where it's, he's just meant so much to this team, you know, and, you know, whether that's some of the winter caravans that he's been on or, you know, just he's been such a pinnacle with this team. Yeah. I mean, I, I've never been a huge radio listener um, for games, but I mean, he, he, he's one of, one of those guys where we had Jack um, there, there's Harry Carey, Dick Enberg, uh, Ben Scully. I mean, Though, as some of you guys were saying, they, they like painted the picture for us. And Mike Shannon was it's the same way. Um, so the, the best of the best are able to kind of make that movie play in your head, even though you're not watching the game. Um, he, he, he can definitely do that. So he, his stories about the, the older players, those are always fun to hear. Um, experience like that um so he he's definitely definitely going to be missed and boyd and you know finally to you i there's just so much about him that you know every fan i think can take away you know things from him i think the younger fan base maybe not as much just because there hasn't been as much exposure to him but you know the impact that he's had it's it's been remarkable yeah i mean i you know there's like on the personal side I'm the first one in my family who didn't, who never lived in St. Louis. So, but Cardinal baseball is a religion for us. Right. So, you know, wherever I lived around the country, you can kind of get KOMX, KOMX at night, you know, you get your transistor radio, you angle it just right. Nice clear sky. And you can get that broadcast almost anywhere in the country. And that's, that's the voice you heard, right. Growing up. That's how I had to hear the games because, you know, I didn't have TV that had the Cardinal games. There's no, we didn't have cable. There's no MLB package, nothing like that. So, you know, that was the guy that got you the, the broadcast. But you know, the, the, the piece I think that we wind up missing is it connects us to this past. This, 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 I mean, we like the Cardinals. We love the current teams. We like 11. We like six. We like four, you know. But we like the franchise. You know, we like the history. We like everything going back. We like the complete story. And these broadcasters, these ex-players, you know, they're, they're starting to kind of fade away. And uh, our connection, especially for a team as historic as the Cardinals, our connection to the past was a huge part of my love for the team. And, you know, when these things, you know, we have Brock and we have Gibson, I know Shanahan's just retiring and that's, that's much better, but man, losing those connections, every time it happens, it just, it kills me a little bit inside because I love those stories and I love hearing all that old baseball stuff, you know, it's, you know, it's great. It's just, it's, it's just a beautiful part of baseball. Well, I don't want to keep everybody too much longer. I know we've covered like a lot of ground here and with the uh, wild card coming up, you know, I'm sure we will cover that when it's, you know, played and, you know, we'll be doing some bonus shows if we can advance, you know, we'll be trying to do as many shows as we can to interact with everybody. It's been an awesome season where our Facebook group and uh, page have just grown, you know, to the likes. I, I can't believe it. And, you know, we started this YouTube podcast, uh, early, I think December, just kind of trying our hand at it. Um, and well over a thousand subscribers. It's awesome. The feedback that fans that take the time to watch these and let us be kind of the voice of the, the Facebook group. And, you know, there's so much good and bad that every team goes 
us through. And for us to kind of be able to share that with so many fans from across the world, you know, I think it's a pretty neat thing. So, you know, a big shout out to our listeners that tune in on the audio, the viewers that tune in every week on the uh, the YouTube channel here. But let's kind of shoot it around and, you know, let you guys kind of have some final thoughts. And, yeah, if you had to sum this up, I mean, if it ended today, obviously we don't know if we're going to win that wild card or not, but just try to sum up what this season is in like a, a few words or a sentence, you know, some final thoughts here as we head into the wild card game. Go ahead, Larry. Uh, like I said, the, to be where we're at now, the way we started is amazing. It just, you know, team concept, um, even with us uh, on this podcast tonight, um, it's nice to have Boyd finally join us and Brad and Zach always, you know, um, even Jared coming back and Chris puts up with me. So um, it's been a great season. Win, lose, or draw off the next game. I've enjoyed the season, man. I love baseball after the COVID thing and not seeing baseball. You know, this is a godsend to me. So, Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like you said, I mean, we had a half a season last year, you know, and at the beginning of this year, the fans weren't even packing the stadium. So we didn't know really what we were going to get. And, you know, we went through the lull time and now it's like the most exciting really that I have been about Cardinal baseball. And I cannot tell you how long. And some of that is to do with the win streak, but some of it is just there's something different about this team. And, you know, while I might have cussed my TV plenty of times this season, Lately, it's been just unreal, you know, positivity and everybody doing something that I'm like, hell yeah. You know, so Jared, you know, I'll shoot to you, you know, kind of sum it up. You know, what are your thoughts on this season and heading into this wild card and uh, your thoughts, man? Well, the season is is a win. It's a huge win. Uh, Winning season, making the playoffs, even though some people don't consider the wild card game actual playoffs. It definitely is uh, because you're playing past 162. So, uh, the year's got to be a victory. We got Aaron Otto. He first time what I don't know how many years it is, but he's got over 100 RBIs. We have three uh, players that have over 30. Uh, Wayno is on his way out and having another fantastic year. I don't know how you can how you can say this is going this year is lost or not a good season. So this is our last podcast of the regular season. Uh, I'm guessing you know maybe we maybe we get one done before the wild card game, but this is the last one of the season. Uh, you know, it's, it's exciting. I guess we'll kind of uh, be able to sum it up later. People are, if we lose, people are going to be mad. If we win, it's going to be amazing. So uh, it's, de- it's definitely a win. And uh, I'm looking forward to playoff baseball. I love the playoffs. Tampa Bay just won their 98th game and are going to have home field advantage through the entire uh, playoffs. So it, it, I like, I like that. I like the races. So, you know, it should be a fun year. Yeah, and it's it's been crazy. So many different things that you could cheer for, you know, guys like a, a Bader and O'Neill, or you know, seeing Dylan Carlson, you know, in his first full season really thrive. Um, you got to see guys kind of step up into roles maybe that they weren't poised for, and you know, bringing in a Nolan Arenado that you know the most exciting thing is seeing him contribute outside of course Field, where a lot of people thought that, that might be you know, not possible. And it, it come out earlier that he went up to Mazalek today and he says, I am not opting out. I'm here for the long haul. I think that's just kind of the, that the whole sum of all parts of like how we should be feeling is as excited as Nolan Arenado is, you know, like I think he fell in love with St. Louis when he came here, but maybe there was a little rocky area where it's like, shit, we're not, we're not clicking on all cylinders and then now winning like this and filling the full embrace of he's Cardinal Nation. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's right high. High. For sure. And so, uh, worst case, even if they, you know, it's already a winning season, but we've got so much money coming off the books. It's going to be a fun off season to see what the Cardinals are going to do regardless. I mean, I hate to talk about other teams. Obviously, I want us to go all the way, but even if we don't, the Giants, Dodgers, that, that, that series, you know, if they end up playing each other, will be – will be pretty out. The fans are going to be nuts. It's going to be a fun postseason. You know, I encourage everyone to watch as many postseason games as possible. Yeah. And Zach, I mean, just watching the way that the fans are embracing this team right now. Um, you know, I, I know there was kind of some empty seats at Bush stadium for a while. And then this one streak happened and you'd hear guys like Wayne, Wright Say, Hey, this is what we've been missing. You know, we're hearing the fans like erupt and that really makes us go out and perform well. That's kind of how I think us as fans, you know, whether we're at Bush Stadium or not, that's how we've been acting, you know, and feeling. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you feed off that energy. I mean, I've personally never been to a playoff game at Bush Stadium, um, but I know plenty of people who have, and they said that it's, you know, it's like nothing else. Um, and I just think it, everything that we've experienced in the last, what, three weeks is just going to be taken up a notch, you know, next next week. And, um, you know, let's say season were to, were to end there, I think we're trimming a lot of fat here in the off season, so to speak. And, you know, I'm going to be just as excited, I think, day one of the off season as I am right now, because I know that there are some big moves that whether we make them actually complete them or not, we're going to be in on a lot of people. Um, and that's that in and of itself is exciting because I, I think that a lot of people, a lot of fans, I should say, are, you know, haven't really felt that that's been a thing, you know, in the last couple of years. So I think that's going to be a change that, that people can get excited about. And Brad, what about you? You know, I mean, it's, it's been just a totally amazing feeling. And I'm, I'm sure you're feeling that way too. Oh yeah, I mean, can't can't get anything better than 18, 18 game win streak almost, and I mean we going to playoffs. I mean anything can happen in the playoffs. I mean, what what year was it? Two thousand eleven, where we kind of kind of trickled in. No one really kind of expected us to do much, and we won the World Series. So I mean, any anything anything can happen in the postseason, um, we're, we're hot. Uh, normally the team that, that's coming in hot is kind of the team to beat. So it's been a roller coaster of a season, that, that's for sure. Um, guy, just loving this ride right now. Yeah, and Boyd, you know, your thoughts too. I mean, not just the season, but finally being on the podcast with all of us crazies. I know we, uh, we get carried away in our group chat a lot where we, we all – talk constantly but to get on here together you know it's nice to have you finally join us you know kind of give your thoughts and opinions on this season and just to feel good that we're all riding the high right now yeah all right i mean it's 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 a great feeling it's good to see all you guys here we need to do something more like this during game time also and uh i think everybody said everything great about how exciting all this is i'm going to put a a, a proposal out there is something I think we should do as a group. And I don't know if the right technology is Zoom or Discord or whatever. Somebody younger than me has to tell me what the right technology is. But we need to get a group watch party for that wild card game. We need to have something like this, people watching and being able to interact during this game. Because not everybody's got families and, and St. Louis proximity and all that. I mean, I'm sitting here by myself. You know, my kids are kind of out of the house. My wife is from Philadelphia. So that's so painful. You know, and, uh, you know, so I think Zach's got a, a wife or is it? Is, you know, I can send my fiance to hang out with your wife. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's, you know, it'd be fun to, to have some face to face kind of interaction during the game. And, and I know we text and do all the messaging stuff, but it'd be fun to do that and, and maybe get, you know, open it up to the group and something like that. That could be kind of fun. That'd but I don't know awesome. how you do it. I'm not that tech guy. So. That would actually that would actually be awesome. Yeah, I can look into it also, but I think that'd be a lot of fun. That would be fun, and I, I think if if we do that, there has to be one person that we invite, and that would be the guy that paints his face red. Uh, he yeah. runs around Bush Stadium, and he is the reason why this win streak is happening. That we have made the playoffs. He was the reason I joined you guys tonight. <laughs> I wanted to talk about him. Not passion is great. That, it's contagious. Did yeah. you really seriously? <laughs> you doing all right there, Larry? No. Jared, Jared, hit the, the, the cut button, right? Jared hit the end. I'm, no e I'm excited to uh I'm excited to see some uh, I'm gonna watch a lot of fall games this year now that I live in uh Phoenix. Uh it, it, you know, which was weird. I don't know if you guys saw that too, but we talked about Hicks. You know, Hicks is gonna be playing Arizona Fall League ball, yeah. Yeah. which is weird, which I thought was weird, and so is Newt Bar. They put him on the team and he's already on the MLB roster, so It'll be weird, but they're playing in, in uh, Glendale and uh, Zach Thompson and Nolan Gorman will be playing too, which Gorman's from Phoenix, so that makes sense. But yeah, you're lucky. Well, like, like Jared said, this might be the this be the last uh, show of the regular season, but heading into the the wild card, we'll either put a show out or we'll try to do some sort of group watch party because I think that would be awesome. Um, again, I just I can't thank all of our viewers and listeners enough for tuning into it. But what a time to be a Cardinal fan. I mean, crazier shit has happened, but we are just we're riding the high and this has been the most fun baseball. I think we can all agree on that. Yep. So without yeah, we should uh, definitely do a watch party. I'm yeah. just gonna go back to that. That's actually a great idea, Boyd. 
Yeah, it's going to be fun. Okay, Given boy, that, yeah, we never want I mean, you on again. Thanks for coming. We could put, uh, <laughs> you know, we could also do something like this and say the live stream would be tough because of copyright, but we could add a separate, I could add a separate computer and one of these boxes could be the game while we're watching it at home, but we could have it pulled up. Somebody more tech savvy than my ass would have to figure this out. That's for sure. But I, I'd be on board with it. I think that'd be that'd be awesome. I mean, some of the people in the group value what we have to say, and others they might want to hate on us. And you know what? The more comments, good or bad, drives those views up. So we'll we can take just do it for up. us. We don't have to be bring group people, do we? I want oh. it to be positive. <laughs> I want it to be fun. Well, it, it would be fun, but I, I, I think if you brought, if you did broadcast it live to the group, you know, you, you might get some interaction there that, you know, might be a little wild too. But yeah, it would save us a lot of sending messages in the group chat for sure if we did it this way. That phone's so small. <laughs> I can't type as fast as you guys. But on, on that note, guys, I really appreciate all of you, you know, joining. Uh, awesome show, and hopefully we can. Uh, close this out with a, a win in the wild card. So with that being said, go cards. Go cards. Go, go cards. cards. Bye.